Hi everyone, welcome to Oncology Pharmacy Clubship. I hope you all can follow the discussions later. It is important for you to identify uh, pharmaceutical care issues in your cases, including re uh, the recommendation on treatment plan and also monitoring parameters, yeah? Okay, doctor. But then I feel that coffee is just so difficult. I can't follow the discussion, actually. Yes, agree. I don't see the point of doing the clerkship. After all, we are not sure if we will be going in the hospital after graduation. It's difficult to get a placement now. Well, STZ, you must brave through the clerkship. Do you know how difficult it was to bring clinical pharmacy practice in the country? Our senior pharmacists have been working very hard to get clinical practice where it is today. They have been playing a huge role in clinics now that without them, the safety of the patients could be jeopardized. Do you want to hear some stories from our clinical pharmacists? Oh, really, doctor? We would like to hear more. Can you tell us more, doctor? Well, it's not me who's going to tell you the stories. I think it's better to for you to hear from a practicing clinical pharmacist. Have you heard about Dr. Shamhanin? She is a pharmacist at Hospital Sungai Buloh for 16 years already, and she is also our alumni. Hello. Oh, hello, Dr. Sham. I am SD, USF pharmacy student. So how are you? We are so delighted to have you here with us today. Yeah, good afternoon, afternoon, Doctor. Hi, Dr. Sham. Hi, I'm your super senior. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. Super, super senior. Super, super senior. Yeah. So, yeah. Any questions you'd like to know about? Or, yeah. Uh, sorry. So, um, Forgotten already. <laughs> yeah, I think maybe uh, uh, students, if you have any questions to Dr. Sham, you are, you are uh, free to ask any questions. I think this is an informal session uh, with Dr. Sham and we want to hear uh, as much as possible uh, the experiences or any advice that Dr. Sham can uh, share with us, especially for the students. Exactly. Yes, so true. Dr. Sham, I'm SD and this is our, my partner here, Zi Ying. So Dr. Sham, can you tell us about your background? We also hear that you are one of our alumni of USM. Yep. So, um, I went to uh, Inang School of Pharmacy. Before that, I was in the matriculation year. That is, uh, during uh, that time, is, this system is there. So, uh, I entered School of Pharmacy in 1992. Um, where are you at that time? <laughs> 1990. Wait, 1992. Born yet? I, I was not born yet as well. Me, maybe, uh, dah cakap apa ya? <laughs> okay, uh, was very, very old, uh, old me, of me, uh, yeah. Uh, and I graduated in 1996, just, just before that. I just want to share a story how I end up in pharmacy school. Uh, actually, it is uh, forced by my mom. Um, oh. during, during 1992, pharmacy is very, very behind the screen. People don't know us. We are like the second citizen <laughs> in medical healthcare. People does not know us when we are not uh we are not seeing you know you need to see our uh, they call it dispenser or now we call it pharmacy assistant pharmacy behind doors in the office you know uh they don't see us they don't only see us they don't know our existence uh it's very sad at that time and uh, i was forced by my mom uh to be a pharmacist uh, um because i don't want to do medic <laughs> i refuse to do medicine and uh, uh, a person have suggested to me this profession and that person i did i did not remember his name he's a lecturer in ukm and um after i finished my spm i went to attend his class he uh during that time there's no computer so 
computer is very expensive at that time. I want to go to a computer class, but I don't have the computer. I don't have the money. I'm not that rich from a rich background family. And I went to, I don't know whether you know about Trinkas, um, shorthand and typing class, class nine. <laughs> Very rare lah. Nowadays, people don't go for this type of classes. Because I have a backup plan. If I don't go, if I cannot, um, I did not get the offer to New York City, I can use this uh, shorthand and typing to get some job. You know, that's my uh, thoughts at that time. And this lecturer, uh, he's very keen when I told him that I have my SPM results already. He go through my results and he says, we can do pharmacy. What the hell is that? I never heard about pharmacy. <laughs> you know how it answered me? He said, uh, do you know where 7E? I said, yes, I know. Okay, on your bed, way back nanti, balik rumah nanti, you singgah kedai tu. Kata apa pula kena singgah 7-Eleven kan? <laughs> Pastor kata, no, there's a shop uh, next to 7-Eleven. Tomorrow you tell me what you saw, what you see, sorry. Then balik tu, I pergi lah, pergi lah. Oh, kedai ubat. Okay. Is this what pharmacy is all about? Kata nak belajar ubat. Oh my God, kata. <sighs> Tapi lagi better daripada medik. To me lah, I, I, I tak nak darah-darah semua, I tak nak lah. Then, uh, then I told my mum. And then my mum was very excited. Go lah, go lah. So was like, oh, but then the, the, the doctor kata, uh, course ni ada dekat satu universiti je, USM, Penang. Hmm. They want to go to Penang, kata. I'm <laughs> okay, I'll go, you know. Yeah, gitu. Why do I have to go jauh-jauh belajar? Oh my God. Lepas tu, dia kata, go lah. Kalau tak buat farmasi, nak buat apa? Cikgu. Kata, so many cikgu already, oh please lah. Dia kata, oh, I like cikgu so much. Kata, I want to be a teacher. Honestly, I want to be a teacher, you know. And I still teach them in a different way, even though I don't end up in, in teaching, uh, teaching in the hospital. So that's how I end up. Uh, but still, uh, towards the end, I'm very hesitant to take pharmacy. I call my mom when I want to, to fill up the form uh, during end of my matriculation year. Uh, I was hesitant still. I still want to go for teaching. And then he, he, she just forced me to get to know. You follow me because I'm a very obedient daughter. So I just put that pharmacy first choice. And I didn't expect we get it. Uh, <laughs> so, but I'm not that. Well, I did excel during my matriculation year. I, 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 I scored A in my chemistry and organic chemistry. But I didn't expect such a horror story when I entered the first year. <laughs> I did well during my vacation for my organic chemistry. I <laughs> masuk school, oh yo, pengsan. Kata macam ni lah pharmacy, oh yo, kena hafal all the structure. I just, you know, um, drag myself lah. Alhamdulillah, I survived. Um, but the one that I really, really love is during my clinical years uh, in in Kubang Krian Hospital. So, you said, let me talk about that later. Yeah, that's my breakup. <laughs> Oh, that's good. That's relatable, actually. Yeah. <laughs> how about you? Yeah. How about SD and uh, Ziying? Do you find that relatable? The first year, during the first year, um, organic chemistry or any chemistry? Yes, yeah. exactly. Because well, I was studying STPM and I actually worked in a community setting for around nine months while waiting for my UPU to get into USM. So with that, I find that I actually inspired by my working experience in the community pharmacy. I feel that it's very interesting for me myself to interact with customer, to tell them that maybe just some simple drug, for example, like cough and syrup, uh, some flu medicine. So this, I think that's how it inspired me to choose pharmacy as my degree to continue my study. How about Zin? Yes, same here as me. And actually, I'm as a first year student in USM and I really have a deep talk and the uh, same feeling with Dr. Sham. And <laughs> actually, I found interested in biology and chemistry. So, and I love to deal with customer too as SD. So I found very great interest, especially in hospital pharmacy and community pharmacy. So yeah. actually, I have a question for doctor. So yeah. how was it when you were studying here in USM? It was fun, fun. I really love it. Um, because the number is small. I don't know how 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 big the class now. Um, uh, 
my batch only 70, 70 plus. Can you just imagine only one you see for the whole country and they've only produced like 70 plus pharmacists per year. <laughs> so it's very insufficient number, but but because of that, uh, we feel very, you know, perasan aku eh, macam elite lah, cewa. <laughs> so, bila elite, elite, kan? uh, macam golongan elite lah, kayangan <laughs> sikit kan. Uh, sebab medik tak ada kat situ kan, so kita belagak lah. <laughs> medik kan kat kebangkerian. So, bila, and then there's a, there's a perception we are nerd people, you know. I don't know whether we are still nerd until now. Yeah, I think most of us are nerd lah, kan? Tak tahu ada depends juga lah. <laughs> so, saya, saya tak, saya, tak, saya, tak, saya tak suka lah dengan that perception. Uh, orang macam takut nak kawan dengan kita sebab kita, uh, you know lah, our, our courses kan teruk kan. I mean, uh, pagi, petang baru sampai and then Uh, orang yang pertama, eh, orang yang last tutup gate tak tahu sekarang macam mana kan uh, paling paling banyak credit hours, paling banyak paper <sighs> paling susah lah, Ashwin lah susah, keperasan susah tak tahulah uh, tapi saya um, I, I'm, I'm a, actually I'm an art person so I mingle around with Uh, lots of students and I'm not the type yang ambil um, ma, uh, yang ambil minor management. So to fulfill my credit hours, I took uh, papers from the art school. I took Islamic uh, paper. I mingle around with art student and I macam join the activity masa cuti like pergi camping, pergi uh, trips. And I really love all these student activities lah. Be beyond um, beyond the school, beyond the lectures, beyond the classes and I'm quite active um, in our Persatuan Pharmacy. Um, I'm actually the project director for Convo. Uh, I don't know whether now macam tu uh, but last time each school uh, student we have their own exhibition. So I'm the project director for that. Um, was forced on me. I was not the one yang volunteer myself. Uh, orang PD saya dan force saya jadi project leader. What I'm trying to say is that what makes me um help me during my career not only the one i learned in the lectures but the interpersonal skill that i have developed and learned in the uh, outside outside the lecture you know so those students yang very nerd sorry to say that yang bookworm duduk belajar exam di kelas actually kan Uh, you you will struggle when you uh, graduate. But nowadays, I believe the the curriculum um, may have uh, all this platform to enhance your skill, bercakap, present. And masa masa saya student, saya selalu uh, kena bully dengan kawan lah. <laughs> Setiap kali ada group work, nampak muka saya, Muka saya ni lah yang kena present. Orang semua tengok kan, ah Syabani ada, dia present lah. Kata apa slide? It's good for me but you guys yang rugi. Masa, sampai bila you 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 nak you nak tak nak, tak nak ambil peluang tu belajar untuk bercakap. Kita pandai macam mana pun kalau kita tak pandai bercakap. We don't know how to, clinical especially kan, you need to talk lots the doctors, a patient, how? <laughs> how on earth you want to convey the message, okay? People to know your thoughts and insight. <laughs> so, uh, and then masa tu I kata, okay lah, fine lah kan lah, orang nak bully I kan. Bila you yang present, confirm lah you yang study. Confirm lah you buat semua homework. Yang dalam group tu tak buat apa-apa pun. Sorry to say lah. I don't know whether it's happened now still. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And and masa tu I really uh, feel like macam kenapa orang buat macam ni kat aku kan <coughs> and but I notice um, uh, when I dah kerja the other skill that I learn during the presentation I mingle around with uh, students I join or activities I develop my interpersonal skills buat masa jadi project director tu I kena minta sponsorship macam-macam lah and uh, student yang lain orang macam tak nak dia nak uh, concentrate dekat grade dia dan uh, I really sacrifice my third year <coughs> sebab 
third year ni yang tough, paling tough kan. Masa tu lah, tak tahu sekarang. Dan uh, biasanya student third year dia tak nak aktif. Tak nak ambil apa-apa langsung aktiviti, tak nak join langsung. Semua bagi kat second year, first year. Sebab yang third year ni final year dia akan pergi ke bangkrian. So dia tak kena be bothered dah. Then I sacrifice my third year. I jadi project director combo masa tu sampai grade. My grades uh, affected lah. Uh, I'm, very, I'm very frustrated masa tu. Uh, so but uh, after I dah kerja, I kata oh I I feel I feel what you call it uh, sangat bersyukur lah even though you know I sacrifice. So, so that's my experience. Overall uh, kalau orang tanya my USM years is very fun. Um, walaupun masa tu kan kita rasa down uh, result tak bagus ke apa ke kita rasa sedih gaduh-gaduh dengan kawan tu biasalah kan. Tapi bila dah sekarang ni kan bila ni dan sedih semua dah lupa dah. Tingkat yang best-best tu. <laughs> Dan student life um, will not will not happen twice in your life. Only happen once and that is only your during your degree year. You buat master ke, you buat PhD ke, will not be the same with campus life during your undergraduate. Okay so uh, those student yang tengah bekerja, eh, tengah belajar sekarang, please uh, Uh, appreciate this moment because um, after you finish your final year then memang it won't happen again lah. Yeah. <laughs> And the friendship yang kita develop masa uh, university normally, normally lah will last long. So I'm still in touch with my friends, uh, my batch. <laughs> Sorry cakap banyak pula. <laughs> okay. How about you guys? Uh, you enjoy your life now or suffering? <laughs> <laughs> suffering tu biasa ah ha, memang kena suffer lah <laughs> you have to bear with it lah okay um, i think um for me uh because i also graduate from SM juga kan oh, okay um, okay my years uh of study life uh we still do this activities juga uh hmm. satuan lah activity persatuan lah kan um hmm. And there are also some not joining, uh, but we really appreciate what we have done. We really glad that we have tried that uh, joining that certain activities. I think that's a very, very uh, precious moment or precious experience for for me lah at least. And tapi okay. uh, these current students, I think um, they won't be that much yang macam tak nak join langsung sebab they need to collect the CST. Oh. Is it correct? Um, yes. Yeah, for the my CSD point because for my year as well, I just have my maybe you want a year two in USM the school compound and then we are affected by the pandemic. So I think it's around like a few semester that we are staying at home to to watch all those online video to have to complete our whole whole years of study. I think same goes to doing as well. So you are the COVID COVID student now. Uh? Yeah, the COVID student, COVID batch. <laughs> COVID batch. Yeah. 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 So, it does affect, I, I believe it does affect uh, your student life and all that. Um, so, yeah, uh, I have no experience on that. Lah. But what I see is uh, um, we have PRP here. So, they are also affected by the training. And after we are Uh, we are now no longer full COVID. We are going back to normal. Uh, we are hybrid hospital already. So uh, there's a high risk of errors uh, currently because people just forget uh, what happened before COVID, all the drugs. Because we are full COVID, you know, we only see COVID patient, kan? So yang ubat-ubat yang tu semua dah lupa dah. So memang kena vigilant lah sekarang ni. Kesian lah, kesian lah sebab sebab tu lah generation gap tu kan? <laughs> So yeah, but it's okay. Um, I think I think uh, all hardship uh, in in our in our region in Islam, uh, there's a promise from 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 God that all hardship eventually uh, He will repay it with some some sweet thing. I just have to be patient. Yeah. Yes. Right. Um, yeah. Any more? Um, what you like to know? Clinical susah ke? <laughs> Tadi menarik lah because uh, when you say that uh, you know um, 
yes, it's not easy to get placement in a hospital yes, setting. Yes, exactly. And, because um, myself, I, I find the clinical is extremely difficult. So at, at, in, I ended up choosing industrial stream, actually. I am one of the industrial stream students. Oh, okay, okay. All right, mm. all right, all right. <laughs> okay. Maybe, uh, maybe SP, uh, yeah, Dr. Chan, silakan. Uh, how about Zing? Uh, what's your thoughts on you? You're a first year student, right? Sorry, I can't. Yes, yes first year. I'm, I'm a first year student. And actually, I'm still wondering about and still exploring about the views between the pharmacy like industry and okay. clinical as well as the community so actually right. i have a question that um i wondering if the things that i've been taught in my four years of b farm will it, will it come in handy when it comes to practical application in the hospital okay uh before i go um to that to that questions i want to uh get um these things straight first huh? clinical is actually as a concept on how you think it doesn't really matter where you are you are industry you are in the logistic you are in uh, wherever you are in the manufacturing even hospital we have our own manufacturing unit where we still do small scale uh, preparation that is not available from the commercial and um, when I was not doing clinical, in my first year of uh, career, I was posted in the district hospital uh, where I'm the only pharmacist in that hospital. I'm not the only pharmacist in that hospital. I'm the only pharmacist in that district. One hospital and five clinics at that So run it up at the age of 25 years old. <laughs> Very young, or the champak macam tu je. Um, and I got very frustrated because I want to do clinical. My passion is clinical. Uh, but I end up doing logistic, you know, purchasing, procurement, management and all that. But because I love clinical so much, you know how I practice clinical? <clears throat> when you want to make decision, regardless where you are, industry, or you go and join the pharmaceutical company, you go and join whatever, lah, even uh, regulation affairs, uh, in registration product. Eventually, our service will reach the customer, the patient. Am I right? So what makes a difference? You, you have a clinical perspective, you have clinical thoughts. When you want to do procurement, bila kita ada clinical insight, kita, kita, we are very careful, you know. We don't just simply buy when supplier tells you uh, something about their product, we just simply agree saja, no. But kita ada clinical thoughts, kita faham pasal trial, kita faham pasal papers. We understand the journal. So, when we make decision, uh, bila kita nak pilih supplier, kita kita bukan tengok harga saja tau. Tapi kalau orang tak ada clinical insight, they just see the business only. Very business minded. Even when you're retail, you go to retail, you don't have clinical insight. You just want to make business. You want to just like, get your sales, that's it. You don't really bother about what happened to the patient. You don't. And this is the thing that makes us 20 years daddy backward. So, but 20 years ago, people doesn't know pharmacies. Because what? They see us as seller. They see us as sell businessmen. They don't see us empathy with them. We don't have the Manusia, we, we don't have that, that human touch. And to get that human touch, you can't run away from clinical. Because during clinical only, we have the interaction with human. And we will see whatever we produce in the kilang, whatever we sell, we jual-jual tu, kita nampak, dia pakai. So I have, I have difficulty orang yang tak ada clinical perspective ni. Contoh eh. Um, doctor complain pasal product and then we go up pergi kat company, pergi dekat all this regulated phase when they don't have green like, they just going to be bothered with our complaint they, 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 they macam pandang benda tu no, this is not a problem um, kata kita, we try to say this is a problem you know uh, you don't see the patient, you don't understand so I have difficulty with people yang dah sort of like they have detached themselves 
from this clinical aspect in their life as a pharmacist. They become very businessmen, very business-minded, and very uh, profit-oriented. There will be a problem, you know. What is our profession is all about? Are we a businessman? No, we are a pharmacist. So it doesn't really matter if you feel that um, uh, is you want to go to industry, fine, that's fine. I have friends in industry who have very good insight in clinical and he or she really understand what we're trying to see. What uh, what happened when your product is with us to our patient. So, um, as I said, clinical is the, is the um, how you think, okay? All right. So, I forgot what's the question is about. Who could I? Can you repeat who asked? Um, uh, yes, yes. Um, I, I I'm wondering or? if oh. yes, I'm wondering if the things that have been taught oh, then, in uh, four years of B farm will come in handy in the practical application in hospital. Yeah. So uh, uh, of course it will be. But what I can see now. Those uh, who go on training in the hospital, uh, sorry, of course, um, in an hospital placement, uh, you have to have that clinical uh, rotation. Okay, and um, I don't want to scare people, but um, I think I think lah, it's one of the toughest rotation <laughs> because most of the time, uh, the PRP. Um, fail in Sungai Buloh, uh, they have issues during the clinical rotation, but not so much if they are posted to inpatient or patient or logistic. Um, because in clinical rotation, it's one to one supervision, it's very close monitoring. So uh, the preceptor can, can see whether you really understand that. But what I want to say that, um, uh, and this PRP, once they have fulfill their requirement, get themselves registered and they want to get a job. I strongly believe because of their exposure in hospital really helps them in whatever area they want to go. Uh, and uh, if you decide from now on you want to go industry straight away, I also believe the same thing. Wherever you lean in clinical will also helps you even though you go to industry, even though you go to retail or whatever, whatever path you want to go. Uh, it does it does benefit because clinical is teaching you the practical aspect of the use of the product at the end. And uh, for example, you go to a pharmaceutical company, they are the one who do trials, clinical trials, right, on, on human and eventually to patient. So that is also so clinical in that sense, right? They go to retail, you deal with customer, that is your patient. They go to regulatory affairs. Um, but as, uh, of course, we have to go through all the all the research, all the papers, and you have to understand that as well. So in my opinion, it does apply any broad, anywhere. Okay, but may you not be 100% of all your job scope. Okay. Um, um, maybe maybe yeah. can I uh can I respond to that, Dr. Sham? Uh, mm -hmm. I cannot agree more that clinical uh is very important in uh in the life of a pharmacist. Yeah. That is why, uh, even though we have a streaming now, Dr. Sham, uh, for a few years we have a streaming of mm -hmm. clinical industry and community, I but see. uh they will stream uh on the final year from here. But we actually have taught um, or instilled some basic clinical skills in the third year. And so third year would be the, the year that they are introduced with the clinical component. Right. And all of them need to require a minimum skill, uh, clinical skills and clinical knowledge before they go to these uh, streamings. Mm. Mm. I, uh, yeah, it's, it's very important for the students to understand this as well actually whenever they go wherever they go uh, uh in different settings 
but they still need to have that basic clinical skill betul, betul. in order for for us to be called as a pharmacist. Yes, exactly. Because um, eventually, people know you as pharmacist when you graduate. And you will receive questions, you know. Like, you know, uh, we have enforcement unit in Ministry of Health. Um, and those in enforcement, I uh, uh, takut kawan saya ada kat sini je. <laughs> very police, in the end, they are like really police person tau, you know. Um, uh, sebab dia kerja orang jahat, dia pergi, pergi court, pergi tangkap orang kan. <laughs> so, dia knowledge sebab dia tak tak tak, tak apply kan. Memang dia teruk lah. Uh, dan diorang pun macam mengaku lah. Macam dia dah lupa banyak benda dan bila um, your parents or your your relative your whoever knows you are pharmacy they will ask you about drugs they will ask you about okay macam covid-19 tadi pasal vaksin macam saya sekarang orang tanya pasal vaksin kan kan of course lah sebab saya kat hospital sebab bodoh kan tak boleh lah tak tahu tapi orang confirm tanya you tahu pasal ubat kan and and how dare you want to say i don't know because i don't practice <laughs> you can't say that <laughs> Then you can't come up with memes yeah, but I lupa dah semua kan. <laughs> so that's what happened in our friends, uh, colleagues in the enforcement unit. Even those in the uh, management that yeah, yang memang dah lama tinggal lah. Macam MPRA pun kadang-kadang dah, dah lupa dah. Memang dah lupa. So, so, so what I'm trying to say is that our, our, our basic as a pharmacist memang dispense macam mana pun. Dispense and uh, provide drugs lah. But of course exactly. kita, uh, kita ada banyak proses lah kan. Ada orang terlibat kat yep, proses yep. di hujung. Uh, yeah. So it doesn't matter lah. Yeah, yeah I do I agree with you. I think that for my previous, from year one to year three, my clinical fundamental knowledge has helped me a lot. Especially during my internship under one of the pharma company. I also applied a few clinical knowledge with that. So Dr. Midet, can you tell us more about the story on the evaluation of clinical yeah. pharmacy practice in Malaysia, maybe? Yeah. So, um, when uh, 20 years ago, uh, the, the most difficulties we had at that time is manpower. Uh, because uh, uh, people are not attracted um, to work in public hospital. And private setting, they are not keen uh, to expand pharmacy's role in clinical because of maybe of course and all that um and it start blooming uh after we have introduced the compulsory service which is in uh, i remember when it's there um so uh before we have that compulsory service always much um kita nak plan something kan nak buat all this uh clinic mtech ke nak ada pharmacist kat ward ke in the end, uh, tak boleh nak, tak boleh nak, tak boleh nak execute. <coughs> and uh, masa tu USM dah start the master in clinical dah. But those pharmacists who have earned master in clinical end up buat, buat management, end up jadi boss, end up, you know, tak practice pun. <laughs> memang tak boleh, memang, memang, memang masa tu, bayang, just imagine eh, the whole of Slango, uh, when we have a meeting, <coughs> Only 15 orang. Macam mana nak buat clinical, kan? <laughs> satu hospital, satu. Hospital h tu adalah 5 orang. <laughs> satu jaga DIS, jaga tu dah habis lah. So, uh, this start, uh, uh, bila macam tu, saya first batch yang buat masa dekat UKM. Buat masa tu UKM baru je introduce uh, master clinical. And masa tu memang, memang uh, coincidence juga masa tu juga dah ada start compulsory service. And uh, youngsters already uh, shown interest to join public hospital. Okay, so um, um, uh, uh, those yang ada master ni yang sebenarnya yang push for clinical masa awal-awal tu dan uh, kita sebab kita dah jadi macam head tak boleh nak, tak boleh nak, uh, tak boleh nak ada kerja management kena buat juga. So normally what what the seniors do yang ada master clinical ni when the youngsters come in, uh, lapu diri uh, if uh, kita dapat macam <laughs> lobby dengan bos uh, nak nak seorang kat clinical then we will groom the youngsters to do clinical under the supervision yang ada master ni. Supposedly that's, that should be the way. 
And I remember I put out paperwork masa tu macam um, uh, uh, drugs yang perlu monitoring kan macam warfarin, we need INR cleaning, uh, you know and then kita tahu macam there's some, some things yang perlukan ni. Then I just want to tell you, uh, you have, we have really, I want to name a few person here lah yang I rasa memang dia dalam pioneer clinical pharmacy lah. Uh, she's one of my best, nama dia Datin Fadilah. And also dia macam mana, masa-masa dia buat master tu she, uh, kita memang kena buat thesis kan, kita kena buat 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 study. So she did a study in, in uh, PCI, pharmaceutical care issues in among renal transplant patient because hostas lain masa tu adalah adalah center for renal transplant. So in that thesis uh, supervised by Prof Rose yang dekat CCMS sekarang Dalam 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 paper tu dia punya cadangan adalah to develop a pharmaceutical model care which eventually it can jadi MTEC sekarang. The first hospital yang buat MTEC adalah swasta yang if I remember kalau ada yang salah fakta ni mungkin ada yang sini boleh butuhkan saya tapi ni yang saya tahulah daripada TC dia tu dia develop MTEC and lepas dia dah habis master memang dia all out make sure the MTEC is, is uh, materialized on the ground with the support from our bagian pharmacy masa tu kita ada strong person macam Sik Samira apa, ramai lah ramai kat atas tu uh, tapi diorang yang push clinical kita ada orang kuat macam Dr. Mansu ada lah ramai ni all these are my seniors lah okay uh, Dr. Mansu kita memang tahu dia sifu dalam TDM and all that jadi uh, uh, masa tu dah ada proposal okay nak buat MTEC so apa Datin Fadila buat uh, dan orang-orang macam saya saya masa tu uh, saya belum pergi sekarang bulu lagi lah. Tapi masa tu saya meminat ICU dengan in antibiotic infection. So uh, and then masa kat sebenarnya belum masa saya choose ICU to be to be my practice. Memang budos lah. Bukan nak berani sangat pun tapi you know just just go for it. And uh, after that we slowly come up with our protocol uh, how to monitor the meds in the clinic, how to run and uh, our pharmacy teacher have, have uh, start sending people to oversee for two weeks attachment. Uh, no, I think longer than that. Attachment in oversee, how they run the clinic, uh, how they uh, do clinical pharmacy and the tu kita buat credentialing. You know, uh, macam train the trainers and all that. And they start involved. Tapi dia lebih mudah masa tu sebab dah ada youngsters joining us. Masa tu compulsory service tak start pun lagi. They just join uh, public service because of they want to do clinical, not because of uh, the job security or or yang macam sekarang tu sebab masa tu tak ada tak ada time base pun, tak ada tak ada promotion tau. Memang you kena ambil exam dengan pergi khusus nak naik pangkat. Macam sekarang automatik, tiga tahun terus naik pangkat, naik pangkat macam tu. Masa tu tak. And ada juga masa tu uh, yang very senior tak dapat naik pangkat tinggi lah. So diorang stay sebab their passion in public service. Uh, so so that's how the evolution and and it really uh, it really a uh, hard work lah macam nak gain doctor punya recognition nak gain all the trust from clinician kan kita kena buy them kita really have to sell the product to convince them let us in <laughs> let us in please open the door for pharmacists to go in the ward to go to the clinic memang it takes a lot of lobbying kita kena lobby Tapi yang lobby-lobby ni yang kena senior buat. Bukan bukan junior tak boleh buat sebab uh, it's a higher level punya 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 uh, decision kan. Uh, so orang senior ada masa yang ada ni yang ada lobby-lobby HOD levelnya um, tak dapat. And masa tu yang susahnya ada certain um, the old school pharmacist lah. Dia rasa macam bila tak cukup orang, uh, bila tak cukup pharmacist kan. Uh, they will shut down the clinical unit. You know, to them Faham tak? Macam I lagi nak orang yang kat dispense counter tu sebab waiting time nak kerja. <laughs> so tak ada orang kat work voice okay. So uh, so I just I just certain the old school they we don't really need pharmacists in the ward, in the clinic. Uh, kata we need pharmacy in our pharmacy own department dekat counter tu. Uh, yang belakang tabir kan. <laughs> orang tak faham kan. Orang tak faham masa tu dah. Tak, tak diberikan priority. So a certain of us struggle you know to get that to get that support from even our own bosses, pharmacy bosses. Ada yang tak support pun. Tapi I tak salahkan diorang, diorang tak faham. Jadi uh, itulah, uh, I think I, we can all see, uh, I can see um, it starts 
dia kira dapat hasil tu dalam macam 10 years of struggle <laughs> baru nampak um, mula dah okay farmasi dah bagi talk they invite us over uh, and I I remember first time I bagi talk for these eye doctors I told you nak bayangkan perasaan macam kata oh, doctor listen to me you know I mean I mean I feel right wow and then bagi CME ke hospital kan macam orang dah start invite kita sana sini kan doktor yang depan saya kadang surgeon dan konsultan I feel so macam uh, kata eh, macam 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 mimpi lah uh, mimpi sebab kita dah idam benda ni macam macam saya uh, you know eh, setiap kali convocation kan kat USM dululah tak tahu sekarang kan selalu dia punya apa tau dia punya tema uh, nak naikkan image pharmacy dekat uh, Uh, apa tu? Image, our, our image in the public eye Selalu macam tu sebab kita kita tahu orang tak kenal kita kan Macam nak kata ada teh lah nak perjuangkan benda tu Tak payah cakap lah buat je <laughs> Keluar daripada tabir tu, keluar daripada kaunter tu Pergi je kat awak, pergi je dekat klinik Kat kedai farmasi tu janganlah duduk kat belakang tu Pergi lah depan jumpa pesen Masih cakap nak berjuang, berjuang tapi buat apa lah Mula lah bebel <laughs> Sebab I'm I'm the I'm I'm the type of person dua, not talker. Or if I talk, I do. And you work for the result. Then only it happen. Kalau you cakap cakap je, you expect orang orang buat ni, no tak payah lah. I mean, it just angan-angan mak jenis saja. <laughs> so my dah dah. Simpan that semangat in me, tapi I tahu people will hurt if I see So just keep it to myself, I diam dia, tak cakap banyak I tunggu je, I dah kerja, kata, let me see, let me try Jadi it's really true, orang tak kenal kita atau kita sembunyi kat belakang And true enough, when I go to work, I dah join service Memang pharmacy menyorok kat belakang tau Takut nak cakap dengan orang Nak call doktor pun takut Sebab apa? Inferiority complex Rasa kita macam macam padahal lecturer dah ajar you 4 tahun kan 4 tahun kat university you struggle kan belajar order chemistry you belajar order whatever tapi bila dah kerja dia takut tak why kita so so I, I kata I memang tapi memang air air lalu lah semua tu kena hampuk lah kena marah tu memang tahan lah tinggal kan ha, sini masuk sini masa tu tak ada social media kan so, orang tak tahu apa kita siapa <laughs> so uh, I brief myself, I just brief myself kan. Tengok farmasi duduk kat bilik, kata tak apalah. Kata, I want to be at the counter and uh, even though I'm the only pharmacist in that hospital for my first posting, ya, I buat lunch call. I buat lunch call, I cakap dengan staff, kalau ada counselling, refer to me. Saya keluar, saya keluar dari bilik. I tinggalkan semua my management, I duduk kat counter dispen. Tak pernah tahu masa tu pharmacist dispen, biasa memang pharmacy assistant je in 1990s macam tu. 1978. Mana ada yang yang dispense semua baju kelabu. <laughs> Pegawai tak duduk bilik. I tak. I padahal I seorang tau. I seorang je. I'm the only pharmacist of the hospital. 200 bedded lah this hospital. Orang boleh cakap tak sibuk. Whatever lah. Whatever want to say. Tapi ada pharmacist mana duduk kat bilik je. So I duduk kat luar. Counters and, and semua orang macam mengelak I. Siapa ni lah. Ni bos you kan. <laughs> Kata tak nak lah dengan dia. Kata, I masih ni lah makcik. Instrumen lah. Bagi ubat je pun aku takut sangat kan. Kata, makcik tu ni apa-apa tak? Saya boleh tanya, saya boleh tolong. Kata, kalau nak kawasan kita masuk bilik. Kita saya mana bilik. Kata, dua nasab mula kena. Kata, ada my staff very, very proud of me. Dia pergi meeting. Uh, ada puas tanya. Uh, siapa pegawai farmasi yang duduk kat counter dispen? Dia seorang je angkat tangan. <laughs> And then, she feels so proud. Kata, eh hey, bos aku dispen ubat tau kat kaunter Haa, dia bagi kaunter ni kat patient Padahal dia, dia seorang je tu So, so macam I nak, I nak cakap macam ni eh uh, Kita, kita yang kena uh, make ourselves visible It doesn't really matter lah if you in, end up in the industry Or if you end up in uh, whatever you choose It doesn't matter You have to make yourself visible Some people I know, they are, they are very introvert They are very behind behind bars, dia lagi suka di belakang komputer, dia buat research well, that's fine, it's okay but when 
there's time you need to speak up, you need to present, you need to say your part. You just have to wait. Dan barulah orang kenal kita. Tapi sekarang ni alhamdulillah orang dah kena faham sikit lah kan. And I think one of the reason our profession bloom. Ah, kau orang marah pula kan. Ah, boleh tak kita kata sebab klinikal lah farmasis dikenali sekarang. Tapi tapi macam I think wow it's an a truly inspiring story lah because this is the first time I hear this story macam mana the uh, senior pharmacist boleh map out or pave, pave the way for the clinical uh, practice to be actually implemented in our uh, setting kan I think it's very inspiring stories lah I hope yeah. the students also feel the 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 passion even saya semangat ni lagi semangat daripada tengok cikgu <laughs> ah, semangat ni dengar sebenarnya, sebenarnya macam saya masa tu geram lah orang selalu kata macam orang tak kenal pharmacy orang tak kenal kita orang selalu macam downgrade kita uh, doktor doktor pandai rendah kat pharmacy Orang uh, macam, uh, saya, saya macam dah paid up dengan semua tu kata. You just, you just have to, you know, bodoh lah kan. Uh. <laughs> I think it's important for the students uh, to hear this kind of history juga kan in order for for them yes. to actually understand uh, yes. there's a lot that has been done, uh, a lot of effort, a lot of struggle uh, for us to come this way kan, our profession. I think It's yep. a good thing that that uh, we have the session today. Uh, but Dr. Syam, I think yep. maybe I need to remind the the audience first to post their questions uh, on Facebook comment box. And while we wait for the question, maybe I have a question too for you. Um, maybe Dr. Syam, can you perhaps uh, give the students some insights on the career progression and also the timeline for the promotion as a clinical pharmacist? in government uh, setting uh, macam mana the, the career progression okay. okay in government setting um yang uh, sekarang ni yang i don't know there's uh, advantage and disadvantage lah dia dah time based maksudnya you get promoted um to 54 eventually regardless of your whatever lah dia dia memang automated ya yeah? uh, dia punya formula lah 3 3 4 3 lah. Maksudnya every 3 years I get promoted to a high grade and regardless of your uh, dulu dia ikut dia, kita punya marking, kita punya performance. Sekarang dah tak ada dah macam tu. Uh, but if you want to be to be what lah? Uh? <laughs> uh, really a clinical and uh, you want to practice a clinical pharmacy and you want to be part of the clinical team Uh, sometimes it's beyond your control lah. So like for me masa awal-awal tu I tak boleh demand lah kan. Memang diorang nampak kat Lisi Hospital kena buat management lah. You kena buat whatever lah. Uh, sebab sorang-sorang. But as I said I still practice. I I still dispense. I still buat counselling. Regardless of my my business. So um, bila you posted dekat hospital uh, and then bila you masuk government tak semua you dapat hospital. Kadang-kadang you dapat PKD, kadang-kadang you dapat management and depends on the bosses lah what's their decision on you kan. So you still have to struggle to go in clinical. In, macam sungai-sungai buluh pun um, kita ada isu jugalah ada ramai je farmasis nak join clinical unit tapi tak tak dapat nak masuk. <coughs> sebab uh, sebab Uh, for Sungai Buloh, um, most of our clinical pharmacies uh, are the masters dah. So, they're not going out from the unit. So, orang lain nak masuk tu, um, kena bos yang hantar dia lah masa macam itulah struggle dia kan. So, um, uh, back to that. But my, I really, uh, I really feel that those yang nak betul-betul buat master, ke, eh, nak, nak clinical kena buat master lah. Uh, there's a big difference. I think there's a difference between young, those yang tak ada master dengan ada master. But I did not um, downgrade those yang tak ada master tak. Kita pun tak cakap ni tak bagus ke tak. It's not because of that. It just um, uh, doctors just tanya tak. That, uh, what's the requirement and then what is your credentialing. Uh, sebab ma- macam diorang nak jadi specialist kena ada, kena ada master semua tu kan. So, is is kind of like benchmarking lah. Uh, 
So, um, tapi uh, in in government, you sambung belajar masa ke PhD, dia tak ada naik grade tau. Uh, tak macam akademik lah. Akademik, I think I think that's a requirement kan for, I do not know, uh, akademik macam mana. Tapi, tapi macam doktor, bila dia jadi specialist, dia memang naik uh, promoted, dia naik high grade because of dia jadi master tu. Bukan satu pun dia high grade. Tapi farmasi so far tak ada. Uh, bukan farmasi je, profesional bukan doktor tak ada macam tu. So uh, macam I buat PhD doesn't impact my 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 part, uh, my career in that in that promotion lah. So in my opinion, how to answer that the progress in your career sebab dah sistem tu macam tu kan. Tapi kalau kat Singapore dia dah ada specialist pathway itu kena bagi tahu lain lah. <laughs> okay, specialist pathway uh, where Where, uh, dia macam PAMD yang dekat US tu So you are that PAMD, dia akan recognize you as pharmacy specialist okay? And uh, I believe it become a hybrid uh, yeah. Tapi dalam MOH dekat Malaysia tak ada lagi macam tu pasti <coughs> Okay ada yang nak tanya? Um, that was good yeah. I yeah, think okay, that so we have a question that is related to the uh, question just now Okay. About, uh, about uh, further study kan. Uh, uh. It's from Tao and K. Hi doctor, what are the reasons or advantages to continue working in hospital with PhD instead of working in academic? Thank oh, you. okay. <laughs> hmm. Advantage ah. Um. The... Um, Nanti ya, macam nak jawab. It's quite tricky questions. Uh, memang uh, you have to be very selective on your area. I mean, um, not all, sebab PhD ni can be anything. I mean, uh, you choose your topic, right? So, to make a difference in hospital, if you are a PhD holder, the topic in your PhD must be related to the hospital setting. Then only it have advantage. Kalau dia tak relevant in hospital setting, your PhD pun tak ada benefits. Tak akan, tak akan effect your career pathway. You understand? So, tak boleh lah you buat PhD dan enforcement dan you duduk hospital. Tak boleh lah. So, you kena cari and uh, to make a difference with PhD, uh, advantage dia, um, Uh, dia memang tak sama lah academic life dengan um, uh, hospital life memang tak sama dan some of us not some of us most of us yang ada PhD ni pun eventually end up kat academic jugalah <laughs> I know kawan-kawan I have PhD semua dah and I I I cannot say that uh, I pun ada that 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 apa kata escape route lah So macam saya tu fikir juga saya buat PhD ni kalau I, I nak join academic, I can join academic if I want to. I have that option. I do have that thoughts to join academic life. Uh, academic, um, uh, the reason I do PhD is also driven by that. Yes, I do, uh, I do have to admit that. But the advantage uh, when you are in the ground, you are For example, I, I tak boleh bagi contoh orang lain ke, I hope you don't mind, I give my own example. My uh, thesis is on critically ill patient antibiotics, uh, how to optimize antibiotics in critically ill patient. And my background is IC pharmacist. And uh, two of my project um, uh, was carried out in hospital sungai buluh itself. Saya ambil sampel sini, hantar pula sampel tu kat UQ. Okay. Uh, then, uh, then, I'm proud to say that from my study, you have changed your practice. The difficulty with academic is to change practice on the ground, right? Salah ke betul saya cakap macam ni? <laughs> Sebab nak tukar practice, you kena dekat ground tau. The lecturer have to collaborate with us yang, yang dekat practice ni. So two of my project uh, is an high dose unicin and augmented renal clearance. After I shared the project with the clinicians after I came back for my PhD, they change practice. They change practice. Mereka tukar dalam guideline. They change cara dia tukar. So, so that's the advantage of um, 
being in in hospital when you have that PhD. Dia punya influence tu lagi better to 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 convince people to make a change and make a difference. And uh, you become more influential in making change in policy. I'm also in the policy making. I'm in the uh, NARC, eh, Technical Working Group 4, for National Antimicrobial Resistance uh, Committee. And uh, clinician will, will, macam dia tahu, I put my PhD dalam apa, bila sampai topik itu, oh, we refresh up. Dia dah jadi macam orang yang buat decision dah. And, and this is the thing that I really love. Uh, and, and, and memang my aim is like that lah, masa mula-mula tu memang I have that. Because sometimes kan kita nak buat changes ni, ada benda yang changes kena ke atas lah. Ada yang kat bawah boleh, tapi ada certain je mana tak boleh, kena ke atas dulu. So that's why yang uh, one of the reason uh, drive me to do PhD, uh, because uh, to be more influential. <coughs> Jadi influencer. <laughs> tapi bukan untuk this ni tau, jangan uh, salah faham eh. <laughs> for, for the profession, yeah. Yeah, I think I think that's correct. Uh, we have to uh, get ourselves equipped if we want to go further in that particular field, right? So it helps us, it gives us credential to to move forward yeah. with our plan or our uh, our proposed uh, practice, right? So that's yeah. correct. Um, thank you for that uh, for answering that. Maybe uh, Z, I think you have uh, a question to Dr. Sham, right? Yes, doctor. And I want to ask, does the role of clinical pharmacist is not saturated currently? Oh, okay. <laughs> hmm. Baru je orang tanya, eh. semalam saya pergi bagi talk kat Hostel Tunggu Mizan. Just imagine eh, dalam angkatan tera ada 24 je pharmacist. Lepas tu bila dia tanya saya, kat Sungai ada berapa? 100. <laughs> Satu hospital 100. <laughs> but tu dia kata, uh, uh, honestly eh, I told them it's saturated already. <laughs> but our issues in Sungai Blue because we are IT hospital uh, and you know, there's a limit to number of PCs and your networking eh? and then the problem is uh, we had right now, uh, we don't have enough PC, we have more people. <laughs> You understand? So, berat-berat komputer lah. Uh, sebab hospital IT kalau tak ada komputer, main tak ada job. Memang susah lah kan. But, um, of course, in my clinical wing, uh, always insufficient people lah. Because the demand is so great. Uh, memang doktor demand nak work ni semua, nak ada pharmacies, klinik ni nak pharmacies, nak buat research dari kita juga. I dah overwhelmed. I'm really overwhelmed. Dan memang banyak hari tu pun doktor dah bising-bising yang auto tak ada farmasi lah, PKKN tak ada farmasi lah. <laughs> Kalau boleh aku nak letak satu, seorang satu. Even my aim is actually two pharmacies in one ward. And our biggest aim is 24-7 service of clinical pharmacy. Dia buat clinical je, dia tak masuk dalam roster ED ke apa. Ha, dia buat shift duty, wah kan. 24-7 kat ward. Kalau boleh lah. <laughs> okay, so um, as a service, uh, I think uh, the issues now is because of the uh, the space and the logistic yang menyebabkan kita nampak macam saturated. But in terms of demand, in terms of it, memang ada ni. I, I'm talking about Sungai Buloh lah. Okay. In other hospital, it depends. I, I'm not sure. But from what I get feedback, memang there's an increasing demand uh, from clinician to have pharmacists with them in clinics and in the ward. And so far, memang kita tak fulfill lagi macam setiap ward ada pharmacist, no. Our priorities now is always the medical medical uh, uh, ward lah because medical yang banyak ubat, banyak 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 issues kan. But in other, kita belum belum lagi dapat dapat that. Dan kita bukan ada kat semua klinik pun. Dan memang demand tu banyak. It's, it's, it may be saturated, it may be not if you understand what I'm trying to say. Okay. And I, I, I'm, what I'm concerned now, there's a big, huge gap between public service and private. We expend so much clinical in public hospital, but private hospital is not, not catching up. And I strongly uh, encourage, um, I know this maybe sounds controversial or maybe sounds uh, very much like selfish, I'm not sure. 
uh, but I really hope youngsters will go and expand clinical service in private setting or the retail. Doesn't matter lah. Whenever you deal with patient, because uh, macam ada macam macam oh you begini uh, macam it doesn't it, I, I think doesn't look nice lah. You have to be. Kalau boleh kita nak push private hospital uh, start hiring pharmacists, clinical pharmacists to be in the in, uh, to provide service. And I know certain private hospital dah dah have that kind of setting already lah. So I I hope to see more of this. All right. All right. Yes. yes, it is. So, Doctor, so what would you be your advice to us actually? Because I think me and Zing here, so we are actually expired to be successful as you like to impacting people life with pharmacy practice and some pharmaceutical care. So, what's your advice to us, to us like young pharmacists here? <laughs> uh, I also don't know what I want in my initial years. You know, I want to do this. I want to do that. And um uh and I end up doing that things right now, yeah. In the, I bought even my PhD can in topic yang I like I not avoid when my takut sana topic too. <laughs> end up my I do PhD on that topic. Uh so you need to explore. You need to explore and you have no choice but to do this try and error. My initial thoughts when I did my clinical year in USM Kubangan, I thought, I thought, I love TPN. I do love TPN at that time. Uh, I don't know why. <laughs> tak tahu kenapa. Masa suka sangat. Macam rasa, wah, wow, best TPN. Tapi bila pergi TDM kan, oh, kecoh perut. I tak tahu, you kenal tak uh, Prof Roski yang sarkastik. <laughs> uh, korang kenal ke kat USM? Dia dah, dia dah lama keluar dari USM. Dia dah join Ustiza kemana sekarang. Sangat scary dah dia. <laughs> Tapi dia ajar TDM yang 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 saya rasa susah gila lah kan. Lepas tu saya buat PKPD lah my, my thesis. <laughs> Memang nak elak lah elak. Oh tu buat tu kat PKPD. Eh, aku pun tak suka TDM masa belajar dulu. Kan tak suka. Dia macam takut. Nah, sangat takut lah kan. Sebab you kena adjust those lah. So, kan. so but I, I end up eh. I end up in this TDM PKPD you know. Even though I, I thought I thought I love TPN, but when I come to hospital and practice and I go to the clean room, you can exchange out, tahu tak, masa dulu kan? Sekarang tak tahu, sekarang pakai mesin-mesin kan? You have to exchange out by using the 15 minute syringe, dextrose 50%. Menggigil tangan dah lah, dia sangat ikat kan? Pakai sing tau, eh, macam tu, bukan macam sekarang pam-pam je. <laughs> Jadi, I dah kata okay, I don't, I hate TPN now. I don't want TPN. <laughs> That's during my houseman. Uh, masa kita tak panggil PRP, kita panggil, panggil house pharmacist lah macam tu, panggil trainee kan. Nah, tak best lah TPN kena masuk clean room, uh, masuk pagi keluar petang dalam jam suit tu. I thought yang tengok patient kat ward tu kan. Uh, tapi masa tu dia tak belum develop sangat lah. Sekarang ni Alhamdulillah kita dah ada banyak. Uh, but uh, the reason I decide not to go all out on TPM because it's not drug. It's nutrition and you know, I rasa macam it's just a small component of it. And I rasa, you know, I want to go betul-betul yang ubat lah. So, um, my 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 advice with you, memang, memang kita akan rasa macam wasted our time to explore. Wasted our time to try and error this and you have to go macam, um, uh, I pernah macam, kerja, I nak try kerja retail lah. Uh, masa tunggu, masa I haven't decide when to join government kerja. I kerja retail satu hari, lepas tu ada drug edit nak minta jual buat coding, buat batuk tu. Uh, esoknya I cakap dengan owner, I nak quit. <laughs> Dia kata, oh retail is not my, my, my blood also lah. So, orang-orang tua kan, tengok orang-orang muda macam ni, dia macam bengang. Budak ni nak apa lah, kejap berhenti, kejap nak kerja, kejap berhenti. Lepas tu dia marah-marah orang muda ni kan. Yang, yang, yang tak tahu apa yang nak. Buat betul-betul lah. Jangan main-main kan. Ah, memang macam tu. Memang macam tu. <laughs> Tapi sekarang sebab I pernah macam tu kan. Try and error sekejap macam ni, sekejap di sini. I, I think I think we have uh, that's house life. But of course if you can make decision awal, you dah tahu apa yang suka daripada awal you dah you dah ada pathway. 
then that's fine. Because apa yang saya cakap tadi, clinical tu termasuk masa tu TDM, TPM, semua dah kena clinical. I just nak, nak tahu kat mana I nak pergi kan. Uh, you kena try and error and explore and uh, jangan ikut trend. Ikut demand. Ikut what is needed at that time. And sometimes what is needed at that time, it may be not your passion. And how I end up in antibiotic infection because there's a huge need at that time. Bukan yang Amin nak sangat bawa awal tu. I rasa, I, I rasa sedih bila patient mati. Patient mati sebab dosing salah, sebab infection ada outbreak. And one of the reason, uh, the dose is not optimized according to PKPD. So, uh, and it, the one yang give me like, macam rasa responsibility, I need to do this because nobody is doing me that. So, if you along the way, you find something that orang lain tak buat. Kadang-kadang yang trend-trend ni, orang lain semua buat, you akan compete teruk tau. You compete unnecessary. And it's a, sometimes it's a quite a nasty fight. But people just want to climb the, cla- the ladder and they just pull you down. They tarik you, they pijak you, they nak atas. So, my advice, jangan pergi tempat yang orang berebut-rebut sangat. There's a possibility tempat yang berebut ni dah saturated. There's no need like dah. There's too many people there. Go elsewhere yang tak ada orang buat tapi there's a huge need on it. So you kena ada marketing juga lah. Okay. Ha, benda yang rare. Macam sekarang AI, artificial intelligence, that's very, very intim. We need pharmacies yang pandai dalam AI juga. In terms of data, big data analysis. Tak pernah cakap benda ni lah. And then macam clinical pun buat yang macam yang, you know, um, yang ada uh, macam sekarang, sorry to say lah, ramai dah sangat orang minat ID ni, tiba tak tahu kenapa lah. Dan macam ada a bit competition yang tak sihat, <laughs> in my opinion lah. And sometimes kita risau, orang buat ni sebab dia nak macam, dia tengok, oh orang ni hebat lah, dah jadi, dah pangkat orang dah kenal dia, dia dah claim. Aku pun nak buat macam dia buat. So your, 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 your nawai tu tu, in, 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 in that is in Islam, your your reason tu, your big why tu, is very uh, self, your own self satisfaction. Not fulfilling the requirement of the mankind. To make a difference in 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 the world is for you to contribute something that you are a benefit to the mankind, not you benefit from. Bila dia dah ada satisfaction tu kan, ha, dia dah jadi war factor. Tak tahu nak cakap. <laughs> uh, I'm really blessed, I feel, whatever my dream in my uni years. In my uni years, I nak jadi consultant. I nak jadi consultant, I nak jadi orang yang berpengaruh, yang yang ada impact dan clinical. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. I'm I'm there already. Berapa tahun tu? Remember, I graduate 1996. <laughs> so kalau you baru graduate, you struggle, that's fine. Don't worry. Don't worry. Just struggle saja. <laughs> suffer, suffer saja. Tak apa. It's okay. <laughs> you reach there one day and then you will forget about all your suffering. Inshallah lah. Eh? Inshallah. Hmm. I pray for you guys. Yes, doctor. Thank you, doctor, for your advices. And Yeah. Yes. Maybe do we have a question? question? Yes. What's the feedback from the audience? Eh? Uh, I don't talk. I 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 Uh, Dr. Syam, what is your biggest success or achievement in oh. your practice over this year? Oh, actually... ini macam masuk di fangkat. Eh, masuk baku dah. Masuk baku. Eh, masuk baku kat sendiri ke masuk tak di tak 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 tak. <laughs> uh, Of course, PhD lah. Um, I want to do PhD sebenarnya daripada saya undergrad. Uh, I, I dream about doing PhD in 19, bahasa tu dah tanya-tanya lah. 
Tapi Allah tak bagilah. He just block. I try to block, block, block. Very frustrated, very frustrated. And bila dah sampai Australia tahun 2010 tu, after I graduate for berapa tahun dah, I graduate 1996 kan, I nak buat PhD. Berapa tahun tu I suffer. But, I realise that uh, my success now, <laughs> macam yang success ke, um, because of that, uh, Allah delete. Sometimes kita tak tahu kan kenapa Allah delay. Our, our God delay certain things for us. But that delay makes me, I I datang sungai buduh, I boleh practice. One of the thing that I really remember until now is when I was I was asked to present a project that I did in Sungai Buddha Hospital during launching of National Antibiotic Guideline in 2014. Uh, eh, 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 sebelum tu apa istilah? lah. Two oh eight, sorry. Dua ribu lapan. Saya join Singapura dua ribu enam tau. Dua tahun je. Tak tahu macam mana carry saya belum macam tu. Uh, dan launching ni besar. It's a, it's a big event. Because DG at the time, Director General of Health and all the whole Malaysia come. It's a very, very big event. And I have to present there. I'm very junior at that time, not that senior. Saya baru you 44 ke apa pun tak ingat. I'm so nervous that I pray my subuh prayer there. I move pukul 5 pagi. My subuh kat situ, dekat auditorium tu, I cari, I cari surau dekat. Memang nervous gila. And I got, lepas dah present tu, Alhamdulillah everything goes well. Um, I got a pat from my shoulder lah. Orang pet me. My senior pet me. Semua pet me. Kata, you did a good job. And uh, yang, 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 yang very irony, the chairperson of that session is actually a nephrologist who have scolded me during my husband years in Serumbai. Dia marah saya kat phone. Dia marah saya kat phone. Uh, adalah saya tak nak cerita dah tu panjang story dia kan. Uh, I get very offended, I get very frustrated. Masa tu, I macam rasa down sangat, kena marah. But I move on my life lah. Tapi I remember her name because <laughs> dia kat prescription tu kan. Kita tak jumpa dia pun, kita, kita call je. Then, she, she congratulate me. Good job, good presentation. It's just a side way. I was, wow! Kata, I tu ingat dia tanya, kau ingat tak kau marah aku dulu? <laughs> You know, kita sometimes terlalu benda negatif ni, kita bawa dalam hidup kita bertahun pahala tahun, orang tu tak ingat pun. Dia move on dengan life dia. Kita yang tak move on. Kan? Um, so, yang itu momen yang saya tak boleh lupa lah. And actually that's one of the, uh, bila saya present dekat National Antibiotic Garang, saya diangkat jadi editorial board semua tu. Uh, that's drive my PhD. And uh, the ID consultant Datuk Chris lah. I really want to congratulate him, uh, Datuk Christopher. Dia dia tulis resume saya. Dia tulis my macam recommendation letter kan. Dia nak saya jadi orang influential and then he said that I'm an asset in Sungai Buloh and he wants, uh, he believe that UC of Queenstown will benefit from me. Dia, dia cakap macam tu lah. Dan uh, itu pun antara momen-momen yang saya rasa macam Uh, sangat best. Dan of course, uh, balik daripada page ni tu macam-macam lah uh, pizza sana, pizza sini. Uh, itu keluar kat TV. Uh, keluar kat TV tu I think pun is a 30 minute talk show uh, on Astro Awani. Uh, one to one eh, live session. Um, memang such a fuha masa tu sebab saya baru balik. Lepas tu semua orang excited saya masuk TV dan memang uh, so many people feel that they are so proud to see me on air. And the feedback I received that I do well in that last session and uh, uh, after that uh, I noticed that according to my PRO kata kalau television ni, kalau media dia, dia tengok, dia pernah invite kita, dia suka dengan cara kita engage tu, dia akan in, selalu invite you dan memang saya, saya sekarang tak, tak tahu selalu tuan oh, TV lah, dia itu tu tak biasa dah. Masa awal-awal tu mak excited dengan Astro Awal ni tapi yang tu memang the real moment because it's a 30 minute show, one to one. Uh, memang I can see my thoughts, semua benda saya boleh share and I rasa seronok sangat sebab orang dah acknowledge pharmacy profession. 
I feel proud as a pharmacist, uh, not as shamani, if you get what I mean. Okay, so hopefully this will um, inspire. And I really love to inspire people. Uh, I want to produce more shamani, inshallah. So I hope I can pass the baton to you guys. Because I pun dah do. I tak tahu bila expire. Okay, alright. So, yeah. Yes. I think ST, you want to ask another question, right, ST? Yeah, How sure, you I feel about that? Okay, Kev? No, I think it's really... <laughs> I think that in the today Sharif has been very inspiring to me, especially like I'm currently a year four student and I'm now to make myself a decision as well to whether to go to to continue study or to go to any workplace. Yes, yes, go, yes, go, yes. Yeah, yes. it mm. But um, it really uh make a difference. You can if you can practice. Um, uh, it depends on your when you want to do, do academic or what. But please collaborate with us on the ground to make uh, your your research more meaningful in that sense lah. yeah all right okay good luck anything else um any more questions or we are come to the end oh i'd like to so i think we got one question here from dr amira Okay. So, what kind of extracurricular activity should students venture into for them to excel in their career? So, anything. <laughs> anything. <laughs> Berlakon pun boleh. Tak kisah. Apa-apa pun boleh. <laughs> I dulu memang uh, uh, pergi art school kan. Memang suka tengok uh, teater semua. Because um, if you realise, I don't know whether you guys know about program kenali ubat anda. You know all hmm. these. Yes. Um, yes. Kan? Uh, so can you have to be very creative uh, you have to do like uh, fun things uh, kena buat run and that we don't do yep. that in the pharmacy school right i mean yes indeed that today we will not teach you how to do that <laughs> pandai pandai lah kan uh, <laughs> but one thing yang kita lacking is creativity i mean you know we have to do videos we have to do posters nice posters we have to be creative uh, and some of us just not creative enough <laughs> Some of us very good in art. Uh, when you do poster, cantik sangat. Macam dia ada art, dia pandai buat kartun kan. We need them, you know. We need them in our team. We may not able to do that, but because they have they have the skill, they have the art, they can contribute lots of things. They can be creative in making uh, fun, comedy or whatever to, to deliver the message to the public. Because currently, we are competing with people yang 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 kata the expert and the public uh, believe them you know anti vax all this uh, jangan jangan all this uh, hari tu pakai vermectin lah apa-apa kan all this uh, orang kata songsam punya ajaran lah so in order for us to compete with them we have to have extra skills it doesn't really matter any skill will do in my opinion as long as dia betul lah dengan buat benda yang salah-salah kan uh, skill bercakap, still creative uh, you can just venture uh, yang I think yang paling penting is bercakap how you bercakap ni tak semestinya bercakap tau ada semua orang dia pandai dekat uh, typing, dia buat newsletter dia introvert but very good newsletter fine, dia pandai art dia buat poster cantik walaupun tak pandai cakap itu pun cara dia bercakap you really understand? Uh, you have to have your enhance your skill in communication, regardless of what platform you use. In on your on your own um your own convenience, and um explore your potential so that uh you can benefit in pharmacy profession, of course uh, as a human in, in general. Okay, I hope that answers the question. Yes, jangan jadi jangan jadi nerd duduk kat bilik kat dapur je tak. Ha, campur sikit dengan orang. Ada <laughs> macam dengan doktor. Ah, uh, yes. Very important skill uh, the apa tu technical skill uh, cara, cara nak buat uh, uh, posting, nak buat poster. I think betul. itu memang important especially uh, in the current punya media ni kan. And yeah. uh, for your information, our students ni memang kita dah bagi coursework punya 
assignment ah. buat poster, buat poster, buat infographic, buat siap berlakon uh, dalam video. So, diorang ni semuanya oh. okay. talented. So, kita dah pick up uh, several people who are very talented actually. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, yeah. We, also, we, need uh, we need them. We need them. Yeah, yeah. We need, them. Mm, we need these skills as well. Mm. Wah, satu lagi soalan saya tak boleh jawab. Yes, uh, Ziying, maybe you want to explore, uh, want to add, uh, you want to, sorry, you want to read the question? <laughs> sorry, yes. I'm not young. Okay. Another question, to be the last one. And doctor, if you are given the opportunity to turn back time and return to USN, what would you do differently? I do not know. Maybe, jangan gaduh dengan kawan kot. <laughs> Biasalah masa tu muda kan, sensitif lah aduh Tapi bila jumpa sekarang okey je um, I do not know lah, uh, differently It's just a sweet memory of my life lah my, The four years in USM And sebab saya setahun tu metric, metric lah uh, Differently lah hmm. I guess uh, I want to make more friends uh, outside the school. I do make friends tapi um, quite limited juga lah. Uh, uh, I don't learn uh, much about uh, I tak tahu lah sekarang macam dulu my friend ramai yang ambil MBA uh, eh MBA pula sorry uh, uh, minor management saya tak buat sebab saya tak ramai nak sangat business Uh, tapi ada certain part of it yang I feel I'm lacking right now that is uh, organizational behavior. You know, uh, there's a psychology that you need to understand in dealing with human. And um, I I do, uh, sekarang saya mencari lah ilmu psikologi ni sebab uh, human kan dia, you know, you have really pandai macam mana nak uh, uh, faham psikologi manusia ni. So, I think that part yang mungkin saya tak tahulah. Saya rasa masa tu saya ramai je kawan-kawan daripada School of Art yang ada there is no social, they are from the social school lah. But other than that, I think uh, of course uh, when you study, uh, you 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 tend to pick and choose your friends uh, uh, which I think I tak tahu lah masa tu muda kan uh, uh, Kita patut kawan dengan semua orang Regardless kita tak suka dia ke Suka dia lah We have to open up And then sometimes Student also dia ada perception kat lecturer kan Ada lecturer kesayangan dia Ada lecturer uh, ni dia tak suka Bila kelas dia dia tak nak belajar Itu pun tak patut lah Itu pun I think Kita kena raikan sahaja uh, Semua ilmu yang ada Dan kita kena belajar je semua Sebab saya masa tu sangat fikir lah Macam Uh, I'm very critical person tau. So saya akan bila saya masuk dalam kelas tu macam macam statistik ni kelas kan. I will ask myself, do I need to learn statistics as a pharmacist? <laughs> uh, <laughs> sebab in my all all my notes, I forgot to ask in all my notes as a undergraduate, I put their pharmacist to be in the front page. All my notes, pharmacist to be. So setiap kali saya belajar something, I go back to that. I want to be a pharmacist. So I have to learn this. So kalau tak boleh relate uh, konten tu dengan farmasi tu biar akan reject. <laughs> saya kata uh, otak saya dah penuh banyak sangat paper, banyak sangat call. I nak fokus yang penting-penting je. I tak kisah pun walaupun saya dapat D. Uh, jangan ikut eh. Jangan, <laughs> jangan ikut jalan saya ni. Tak betul sangat. Um, tapi tapi I think that shouldn't be do lah. Kita tak boleh selektif uh, pada lecturer, selektif certain topic. Uh, sebab yang ni kita suka, yang ni tak suka kita pilih-pilih. I think uh, yang tu yang saya buat yang saya rasa I should not do that. Uh, dan because of that attitude, uh, saya banyak ilmu yang saya terlepas lah. Tapi dah, dah, dah jadi kan. Tapi Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah graduate jugalah walaupun ada perangai yang tak boleh elok tu. <laughs> And then uh, when I do uh, do my master, I put there clinical pharmacy to be. Uh, during my PhD, consultant to be insyaAllah. Mm. Alright. Uh, thank you Tisham, for the for the answer. Uh, but unfortunately we are running out of time now. Okay. Although I actually want to hear more from you and I think 
all the students are so inspired and wants to know more from you actually but uh, this is the time that we have for now okay. but um, maybe before we end the se session maybe we can have some final words from you um for the future pharmacies um Currently, is more challenging, I believe. And the challenges that you face right now is a different challenges that I have went through. Or um, our, uh, the one, the same, same era with me. So we can't tell you what's best for you. We can't tell you uh, how should you handle this challenge because we, it's, we don't go through the challenges this pandemic era and all that, please embrace the challenges. You have to just embrace it and brave enough to go through it with a positive mindset that there will be a light at the end of the tunnel. Just hold on to that belief until you meet the light. <clears throat> but don't... Uh, don't stop hoping. Don't stop hoping, then don't uh, feel overwhelmed and you want to quit. The winner never quits and the quitter never wins. Okay? Oh, that's marvelous. <laughs> that's a very great word. Thank you yes. very much, Dr. Shamhanin, for being with us. You bear one hour and 30 minutes with us to join us with the webinar. We really appreciate your time and effort. And also, thank you, everyone, for being here with us. We hope this session has benefited all of us and have given us um, inspiration to move forward as, a, as future clinical pharmacies, especially for the students. So final words from us, be humble, be inspirational, and be a true pharmacist like Dr. Shamhanin. Uh, today, that will be all for today. Remember to fill in the um, feedback form okay, to retrieve your e-certificate. Uh, it is included in the comment section uh, in Facebook. So guys, until our next webinar, take care everyone. Goodbye. All right. Goodbye. Thank you, Dr. Shang. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.